Chronicles chapter 16. You know, I don't know how many of you are aware today, but today is the feast day of the day of Pentecost. Uh, they refer to it in the Old Testament as the Feast of Weeks. It is counted down seven weeks from the day of the Passover. So today they celebrate the day of Pentecost. Now I'm not talking about Pentecost as far as the denomination. But Pentecost is the day and the spirit. The spirit of life. The spirit of Christ. Though I think sometimes we could borrow some of the spirit that our Pentecostal brethren have of their joy and excitement. You know, too many times in, in the Baptist denomination, we become dry and stale. People just seem to somehow fall into a stupor and worship begins to kind of be wooden. Now, this is speaking in general terms over churches in general. We need to bring back our vigor, bring back our zeal and our enthusiasm. Instead of being a mausoleum of the dead, we need to be a coliseum of praise. And that's what the spirit of Pentecost is about. The spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, and, and the joy that we have. So today, we're going to talk about wonderful worship. If the church is going to go on and make it through the next millennium, we must recapture the praise and enthusiasm the church had two millennia ago. And that's why after this morning we looked at the tabernacle, we looked at how it was a shadow of salvation and living the victorious Christian life. We're going to take a look at that tabernacle this evening during David's time and see how it can instruct us on worship. Amen. So if you got your Bibles over there to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, we're going to start reading in verse 7. On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Sing to Him, sing psalms to Him, talk of His wondrous works, glory in His holy name. Let the heart of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders and the judgment of His mouth. O seed of Israel, His servant, your children of Jacob, His chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember His covenant forever. The word of which He commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant which He made with Abraham, His oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give you the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When you are few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, He permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, He rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Amen. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim the Good news of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations. His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before Him. Strength and gladness are in His place. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory. Do His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. O worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field rejoice in all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for He is coming to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Amen. And say, Save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to Your holy name to triumph in Your place. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen. And praised the Lord. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me?
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before You this evening, Lord, seeking to desire to know You more intimately and deeply. Lord, teach us from Your Holy Word how to worship You with sincerity in all of our heart. Lord, be with us now as we venture into Your Word. Pour Your Spirit down upon us. Lead, guide, and direct us. In Christ's name, Amen. So I want to start off with asking you guys a question this evening. Now you can you can give a show of hands or, or not if you don't want to, but I want to ask you, how many of you all own a hymnal in your house? How many of you have a hymnal? Well, we might need to get some more Bibles in the house. You see, a, a large chunk of this Bible is a hymnal. It's praise. It's psalms. Even most of your New Testament epistles have a hymn in them. Now we don't know the chorus or how the tune goes, but we have the words and it describes them as a hymn of praise or a song or a rejoicing. There's more praise in the Bible than prayer. There is more description in the Bible of how to praise God than there is to pray to God. And this evening we're going to look at when David brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. There was praise and there was glory and there was music. As we just read his psalm that he declared. It was absolutely and indescribably glorious. The praises of the people worshiping God were such wondrous. So much that in the New Testament, the Apostle James spoke of the tremendous latter glory that would come to the church. In Acts chapter 15. When the Jerusalem council met, he used the example of the tabernacle during David's time of the glory that would come to the church in the end days. <coughs> there will be glories in, in the last days that we are in. The Bible says it's even greater than the glory that was seen when the Ark of the Covenant arrived. So we're going to look at worship. See what these passages can teach us about worship Amen. and how we are to worship the Lord. And to cure any institutional spiritual dry rot, so to speak. I want us to first look at verse 6. In verse 6 of chapter 16, it says, Benaiah and Jahaziel, the priests, regularly blew the trumpets before the ark of the covenant of God. The word regularly here. It's actually a word that means not just something I, I regularly do, like you regularly brush your teeth or comb your hair, but it more means continually. A few verses later, we can look over in verse 37 that it actually talks about. It says, So he left Asaph and his brothers there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister before the Ark regularly and every day as work required. So it's supposed to be done continually. David even wrote in, in the Psalms, in the 34th Psalm, when David recorded those great praises to God, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We praise Him when we feel like praising Amen. Him, when He obviously, when we can see with our carnal eyes that He has done something so great and magnificent for us, but it's oftentimes that we do not realize that God is sending a blessing in the skies with a hardship, then we actually probably need to be praising Him also. We praise Him when we feel like it. We praise Him even when we don't feel like it. We're continually praising God no matter what. I love the 34th verse in this psalm. As I have sung it many times in a song, and it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Everything that God gives you will be for your benefit. The will of God sometimes is what we need in our life if we had enough sense and understanding to know what we truly did need. Sometimes it looks painful. Sometimes when we even lose a job, we wonder, well, what's going to happen next? How are we going to provide for our families? We realize later down the road that oftentimes that job was probably even holding us back from something greater that God wanted to give us. Something even better. These verses tell us to worship God constantly and regularly and making it a habit of our life. A habit of our life. Do you praise God when you're at church and when you're not at church? 
You praise God when you're at home. You praise God when you're driving down the road. Now, I remember I was in a Sunday school class with a lady one time and, and apparently she was listening to Caleb and in some intense praise and worship and, and had her eyes closed and drove off the road. So make sure you keep your eyes awake when you're Amen. driving. But you continuously praise God. Making it a habit in every aspect of your life. How about when you come to church? Do you stop worshiping God when the music minister stands down? When, when the song leader stops, do you stop worshiping? Do you stop? Or is when the song leader is there, are you focusing on the song leader? Folks, did you know that all of our churches, when we're worshiping, we're all performing. We're performing for God. We are to be worshiping Him, every one of us, with our attention on Him and singing praise and glory and worshiping Jesus Christ at all times. Worshiping Him. Music is not the entire focus of worship. It is much more. It is praise. It is adoration. It is confession. It is forgiveness. It is responding to God's greatness. At any time, if in worship, your heart moves. As the songs have some of the greatest theology in them that has been ever been preached are sung in our hymns. They can move your heart. They can lead you to repentance. Understand forgiveness. Lead you to a deeper relationship with God. And I want to encourage you that during our worship service, if you feel God moving in your heart, and you feel like you need to come to this altar and pray, don't you wait till the end of service when we do an altar Amen. call. Get up out of your seat. Come, kneel down and pray. Seek God's face no matter what. Well, we're not bound by the restrictions of an of a order of service or anything that's quenching the Spirit. Have the freedom to where if you feel like God is calling you during worship to come and pray to Him, come pray. Maybe He's speaking into your heart and, and asking you to come to salvation. Maybe He's speaking into your heart and dealing with an area of your life. Don't feel timid about accepting it no matter what time it is. Have the freedom to allow the Spirit to move in your life when you're worshiping. Have the freedom to respond to God. And we are also to worship God. We're to worship the Lord in celebration. Look at the worship in these passages again. When David starts singing this song, it was so full of joy. David assembled many musicians and singers. David was so full of the Lord that he was leaping and he was dancing and he was praising God with all of his heart and all of his might. You cannot truly celebrate Christ without losing preoccupation with yourself. We focus on the infinite love of God. You see, if you're depressed and, and you're sulking, you cannot praise God and sulk within yourself at the same time. You totally deny self and begin to praise and worship Him. Amen. Being thankful for all. You cannot be irritated and praise God at the same time. I know there's many times in life that, that I, I get irritated with something. I, I, I got a wrench and I bust my knuckles or, or something else happens. I stub my toe on a bunch of kids' toys in the floor. It's tempting to get really aggravated. But I promise you have to find a way to worship God even when you're not at church. Amen. To sing praise to Him and sing songs to God. Because you cannot be irritated, you cannot be depressed, you cannot be any other thing when you are singing praise to Him. Walking and experiencing in His joy. Focusing on His love. Look at these Scriptures again. It says, There was a great assembly of music and, and singers. And, and David was so full of that Lord, He was bringing joy. When we come to church to worship, let us bring joy for the Lord. Amen. Let us bring an offering of praise and sings and, and joy for Him. Let us bring to worship Him. Because we can do it confidently. You know, the book of Ephesians gives us a description of worship. Paul tells us this. He says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, he says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He mentions three types. Psalms, hymns, 
and spiritual song. Amen. Hymns are what we sing to tell the story of Christ. You guys probably are all familiar with the hymn, I love to tell the story of a Savior who came from glory. I'm not a good singer. But we don't have to be. We're supposed to just make a joyful noise into the Lord. God is not concerned if we're adequate for the fifth sympathy or we can go play in some secular musical band, but He is interested and is our heart right to worship Him. That's what brings God joy. That's what allows the Spirit to flow freely. And hymns are the story of Him. It's the story of Christ. It, it tells about Him, who He is. It tells about our Savior. These are some of the greatest evangelistic messages that was ever written. When we come to church and we sing hymns, those that are in here that don't know Christ, it lets them know who He is. Amen. You see, what better way? You see, you can preach a message and they're listening and they're hearing it and they're receiving it. But when we sing hymns and they're singing along, well, they're, they're repeating it. They're saying what He is. It's telling the story and they're saying it even with their own mouth. Amen. What a better way to retain who Christ really is than even confess it out of their own mouth. Mm -hmm. And it helps with their understanding. But then there's also spiritual songs. These express the, the inward spirit that's inside the believers. These could also be, uh, a lot of them are listed as our praise and worship songs or, or a lot of in this category nowadays. When we sing how great is our God, or how wondrous is He. There are songs that you can intimately worship to. Songs that you can express your heart with God. Your spirit with Him. And bring yourself great joy. But the one I, I really want us to focus on tonight is Psalms. The Psalms make up a great portion of the Bible. 150 of them in the book of Psalms. And there's us listed throughout the Bible as we just read another psalm that David declared right here. Not all the psalms are written by David. Some are, one was even written by Moses. Mm -hmm. But what do the psalms speak of? Psalms speak of our relationship with God. Is there something in your life that you want to thank God for? Something in your life that you don't realize you need to thank Him for? The psalms are there to help us declare it. They testify of His wondrous works. They bring Him adoration. They talk about the glorious things that He delivers to His people. They promote Christ. They promote salvation. They promote the wondrous works of God. The Psalms. How great is it to sing the Psalms? Is there areas in your life and, and the Psalms are one of the greatest medicinal tools we ever had? You know, if you want to save a lot of money on a psychiatrist, you want to save a lot of money on a Christian counselor. Read the song. When you're feeling depressed, maybe if you're feeling anxious, maybe you have anxiety, maybe you can't sleep, maybe you're worried, maybe you're troubled, maybe there's something in your spirit that's just trying to crawl out, maybe your skin's crawling, whatever it is that you're struggling with, maybe it's fear. There's a song that somebody felt the same way. Amen. And they cried out to God. And not only does the Psalms express our relationship and our feelings and, and our concerns to God and make them known to Him, but you will also see in the Psalms that God answers. Amen. And you see God move in a mighty and powerful way. When we can sing the Psalms and allow the freedom of the Spirit to move through worship of God. The freedom of the Spirit to worship. Just as the Spirit came down on this day in Pentecost. You know, some people say I would have loved to have lived in the days of Christ. And it would have been good. I mean, that would have been pretty spectacular to walk with Jesus as one of the disciples or just somebody that just got close to Him. But you know, actually Christ said, it's better for you that I go away. It's more expedient for you that I go away and I'll send a comforter to you. And He was referring to the Holy Spirit. So that it's in Christ's words, then we could translate it, 
loosely in saying that it's better to have the Spirit inside us than Christ walking beside us. Amen. Because it's His Spirit now that lives within us that guides and leads us and directs us in all ways. So I want to encourage you. Begin to praise God. Begin to worship Him with your heart. And not worrying if somebody else is listening to your worship and your singing and thinking, man, they're listening to me or I, I just ain't comfortable. We're not supposed to focus on them. We focus on God. Amen. We're singing to Him. We're all worshiping Him. It's all about Jesus. And if God moves in your heart and you feel the stir, Spirit stir you and you feel like you need to come and pray, come and pray. Maybe you feel like you need to talk to somebody about something that's, a, that's happening in your life. If you need to talk about salvation, there's deacons here that would like to talk to you. There's others here that would like to talk to you about a relationship with Christ. And then even when you leave church, don't quit worshiping God. As, as David said regularly, without ceasing continually, make it a habit in your life. When you go home with your family, sometimes it's good to turn the TV off for a little while. Turn on the radio. There's some Christian music. And worship with your family. Worship with your children. Amen. Let them experience the joy of God through worship through praise, through hymns, songs of spiritual, and it says songs of songs. Begin to worship Him. And you'll find that whatever it was in your life that was agitating you, depressing you, that you can't sing songs of praise and feel that way at the same time. If you are feeling that way, look up a song that describes it and kind of fits into where you're feeling. Amen. Begin to praise God through that song. And see if He doesn't start to move in your life. And, and as you see the psalmist go on through his life, you'll see God moving in yours as well. God is wonderful. Never forget and neglect to talk about His wonderful deeds. What all He's done. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The glory of the heavens. The Lord of all people in all glory. The Bible tells to declare Him. Sing to the Lord to all the earth in verse 23. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. From day to day. So maybe tonight there's something that's been keeping the song of God from your heart. Maybe there's something tonight where you've not been able to praise Him like you want to. You've not been able to worship Him. You've not felt the freedom of that Spirit. I want to give you an opportunity tonight because we looked at the tabernacle this morning. We went the way of the cross. And this evening, we want to bring the Spirit to life in your body. Just as Pentecost reigned so long ago. That day that the Spirit came down, maybe there's something that's been keeping you from praising God, from worshiping Him, singing joy to Him. The joy in your heart. You know, most of the Psalms are, are the story of David. You, you can go back and you can read the books of Chronicles and, and you can line up the story of David and, and see the events that are happening in his life and see what is troubling him and, and what's going on in his life and, and see him expressing it to God then in the Psalms. Do you sing to God and express Him what's going on in your life? Are you able to sing praise to God even when the troubles of life brew? Are you able to praise Him in the good times as well as the bad? Do you have the freedom in your life to worship Him in truth and in spirit? Do you know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? That's the question to ask yourself. Tonight. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before You tonight, Lord, and we give thanks and praise to Your name. Lord, we thank You for so much for what You not only done and, and Lord giving us psalms and giving us hymns and giving us spiritual songs but Lord you came and you died on the cross that way we could express not only those powerful worship to you but Lord you would also respond and meet our needs and bring joy to us Lord we just ask now that you move on and see people if there's anybody here that doesn't know your son and they, they want to come to that relationship Lord but they'll understand that they want to sing praise and worship to you and Lord that you'll bring joy to their soul Lord let draw them near tonight that we might accept that gift of salvation 
And Lord, if there's any here tonight that maybe their souls have just been uh, kind of dried out, Lord, and they just need to be experience a renewing of you, a freedom to worship again, to bring joy back to our lives and freedom, to be able to sing praises, to be able to sing spiritual songs, to be able to sing the songs. We'll just ask that you'll stir them with your spirit tonight. Bring them to this altar. Let somebody talk to them, pray with them. But Lord, most of all, we ask that your spirit begin to move in them. Lord, be with us now. Pour your Holy Spirit down upon us. And bring us closer to your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and turn to page 241.